Genesis chapter 14. One of the themes of this record is that God tries to make Abraham obedient. He doesn't just give him a command and say, look, submit. If you do, then I'm here for you. If you don't, well, you chose not to. He loves us and he's called us because he wants us. And so he even works to try to make us obedient, if that's what we truly want. He had told Abraham, all right, here you are in Canaan. Walk up and down in it, the length and the breadth of it, because this is your land. Abraham doesn't do that. He wants to settle down. He doesn't want to keep traveling. He wants to settle down. Oh, no. You've got to walk around the land. So what happens? His relative Lot, who's living in Sodom, gets attacked by a big confederacy of the other kings in Canaan. And they take Lot and his family into captivity way up in the north of the land in, near Damascus, what is now Syria. And so Abraham is living in the south, charges up there with 318 men with him and attacks this confederacy of kings, wins a great victory and rescues Lot. God is making Abraham do what he said, walk up and down the length and breadth of this land. And so God will do that to you. If you want to be obedient, he will arrange circumstance so that you are. And tell God, yeah, I'm weak, but I want to do the right thing. Please help me. And that higher hand of providence will come into your life. Now, when he defeated this confederacy of Canaanite kings, Abraham effectively was in control of Canaan. That's why they all come crawling to him now in this chapter. And, he, he, and they say, you can take the spoil of all the kings. No, he said, I don't want any of it. I don't even want a, a shoe latchet. I don't even want a sandal strap from what you've got. Lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. Keep it. I don't want it. Let me go back to my relatively obscure life as a nomad. Now, that is also for us a pattern that turn down what you can get in this world because this is not our resting place. Our eternal inheritance is future, not now. It's not for us to have the grandiose, fantastic life, awesome life. No, no, no. It's for us to live and wait as pilgrims in obscurity, in faith, in trust for God's kingdom to come.